More gains for stock markets, a federal budget heading back into the black, and economic data has picked up over the last week. Interesting developments ahead of the federal election next month, but how sustainable is the good news? With almost every major central bank in the world, including the RBA, sounding more cautious about the global growth outlook, and so rate hikes are off the table, stock markets and risk appetite is on the rise, with our ASX 200 and the US S&P 500 within a stone's throw of last September's highs. The fact that equity markets have taken comfort in the promise of more central bank support is understandable, but does make the assumption that the real economy will respond to fresh stimulus. And the latest economic data seems to support this view, with an improvement in the March manufacturing surveys in the US and China, although no signs of this trend yet in Europe and Japan. In response to the dovish central bank comments, long-term bond yields have dived around the world, with the US yield curve inverting, not a good sign for the US economy in 2020, and record lows for our 10-year government bond yield, as expectations have grown for a fresh round of RBA rate cuts. It's hard to argue against these now in lieu of the weaker GDP data last month and further declines in property prices. But complicating the outlook, the local economic data has improved over the last few weeks, including a rebound in retail sales, further improvements in the jobs market, and a record trade surplus. Combining this with the possibility of a resolution in the US-China trade talks, and the next six months still have significant tail risks. So, we maintain a cautious stance and, like the RBA, suggest the risks are fairly evenly balanced, but slightly skewed to the downside, especially with the Brexit going nowhere fast. The federal budget looked positive at first blush, with a forecast surplus next financial year of over $7 billion and an improvement in government revenue, allowing for income tax cuts and significant infrastructure investment, both of which may be more helpful in the long term as fiscal stimulus than any monetary rate cuts the RBA can offer. The Reserve Bank have been on the front foot encouraging tax cuts, as this chart from a recent RBA speech shows. Given low wages growth, it does appear a good time to reduce the tax-to-income ratio, and both sides of politics appear committed to this. The budget showed that net debt-to-GDP has peaked at 19%, and the assumptions in the budget appear conservative, including an iron ore price at only $55 US per tonne compared to currently trading at $90. Whether there is enough fiscal stimulus to eliminate the need for RBA rate cuts, though, we shall see. And finally, the assumption in the budget is for the Aussie dollar to stay around 71 cents next financial year, which again appears conservative as the downtrend remains intact and growing expectations of RBA rate cuts may extend this trend. And that's the market update from Bendigo Bank. <music>